Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, February 27th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, American sailors are left crippled from Fukushima radiation. Then, a central banker becomes the new Ukrainian prime minister. And Russian jets are put on combat alert. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Like Howard Beale says in Network, you've got to get mad. You've got to get angry, you've got to find your humanity, and you've got to start kicking some New World Order ass in the InfoWar. Well, has Washington finally gotten the response that they want from the Russians? Remember the Cold War? Remember the good old days of high profits for the military industrial complex and the whole world living on the brink of nuclear war? Well, that seems to be what Washington wants to bring back. That and, of course, banker control of the Ukraine. We see that Russia has put fighter jets on combat alert as tensions are mounting. Paul Joseph Watson reports Russian fighter jets along the country's western border have been put on combat alert as tensions mount over fears that Moscow is preparing to intervene militarily to protect its interests in the Ukraine. They're saying con constant air patrols are being carried out by fighter jets in the border regions. Yesterday, a snap drill involving 150,000 troops was announced that it would take place in western Russia. And of course, Moscow has also announced plans that it's going to have a massive expansion of its global military presence with a number of new bases in countries like Vietnam, Cuba, remember that, Cuba base, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Singapore. It's significant because Russia currently only has one naval base outside the former Soviet Union in Tartus, Syria. And of course, they're attacking their military access, their naval access, through the Crimea. What do they think they're going to get from the Russians? Well, we know what they think, because we had Victoria Nuland, the Assistant Secretary of State for Europe and Eurasian Affairs at the State Department in the U.S. She calls the Ukrainian ambassador on an unsecured line, and basically with ham-fisted hubris, talks about how they want to F the EU. And then has the audacity to say, I'm amazed that Russia would be listening to my phone conversation. She knows that they're listening to her phone conversation. Come on, that's all we've been talking about for the last year, is how the NSA and intelligence agencies are listening to everyone's phone conversation. So when she, as a Secretary of State assistant at the State Department, when she calls the Ukrainian ambassador, she doesn't think that's being monitored. She doesn't think it's going to go out. That's ridiculous. Now, of course, today she's talking about Yat. That's right, Yat's her newfound friend in the Ukraine. He's a central banker that's now been appointed as the prime minister of the Ukraine. According to Kurt Nemo, he says a reshuffled Ukrainian parliament that's been installed after a coup last week, has voted to appoint Arseniy Yatsenyuk as the new prime minister of the company, or she calls him Yats. I guess I'll call him Yats, too, since that's kind of a difficult name to pronounce. But it says, this is the way Bloomberg reports this. They say, Ukraine is on the brink of bankruptcy and needs to be saved from collapse. And Yats has a strong economic background. In other words, that's code word for, yeah, he's a banker. That's a quote from the Heritage Foundation talking to Bloomberg. Now, the IMF is stepping in. They're going to offer $35 billion to the Ukraine. This is the way they're going to enslave them. Russia was only giving them $15 billion, but the IMF is going to offer them 35. It's very much like the offers you get right after you graduate college. You know, they want all these credit card loans that they're going to extend to you. They need to look at the terms. They need to look at what the IMF has done to destroy democracy in Greece and Italy, taking out duly elected people and putting in Goldman Sachs bankers. They're going to loot the country of the Ukraine. And at the same time, the U.S. State Department and the military industrial complex see a way that they can revive Cold War tensions and create yet another new profit center for the military industrial complex. They lost the Cold War profit center when Russia collapsed. And then they started the police state, the terrorism state profit center. Now they're going to go back and Riyadh, the Cold War profit center. It just keeps following the money. Follow the money and see what these guys do. That's what this is about. Now, in some sad news, we see that another Navy lieutenant has come forward and said that the power plant mission has ruined his health. It's now up to 100 people. At the time that we talked to a sailor a few weeks ago that was on the USS Ronald Reagan that was dispatched to Fukushima, at that time it was only 79 sailors who were saying that they had contacted various diseases that they believe 
were a result of going to Fukushima and being exposed to high level of radiation in both drinking water as well as showers and hanging out in the, that local area. It's been almost three years since Fukushima happened. We're only about two weeks to the third anniversary. It says the Navy rushed in to help, but those sailors are now paying the price. Nearly 100, 100 of them believe that the mission ruined their health. Now, the way CBS News Baltimore reports this, they say the U.S. military sped to the disaster zone for help, not knowing it was headed into the path of a radiation plume. That's not really convincing. And this is what the lieutenant says. He says, when you've got a nuclear power plant that's melting down, how can you not expect health risks to come from that? Now, of course, they're not getting any help from either the Japanese government, TEPCO, or the U.S. military. They're suing TEPCO for this. And the U.S. military says, well, we understand these people are very sick, but government reports indicate that the radiation levels on the USS Ronald Reagan were well below what's considered to be dangerous. Why? Because they continually redefine the radiation levels to suit whatever their current purpose is. Now, one of the things that we learned from Fukushima was that it's not just a reactor failure like we saw at Three Mile Island or like in Chernobyl that we have to be concerned about. It's also the storage of the nuclear waste. This is still the major concern at Fukushima. And we see that this is happening here in the U.S. We had 13 people exposed to radiation at a New Mexico plant. They were handling waste. It was waste leak that was exposed to them. And this is something that we're seeing more and more as we see old plants that are getting older and older and they're starting to leak water, they're starting to leak from the storage vessels, and yet they continue to extend the licensing of these plants, which were initially licensed for maybe only 20, 25 years, they just arbitrarily extend it for another couple of decades, or 30, or 40 years. So we're continually seeing breakdowns of equipment, we're seeing leakage of radiation, and that's what we really need to be concerned about, is that not just a catastrophic failure like we saw at Fukushima, but the low level constant leaking and the bioaccumulation that happens with radiation. We have these nuclear power plants all over the United States and the former head of the NRC has said we need to shut down all of them and redesign them from the ground up because they all have the same fundamental problems with nuclear waste storage that we see at Fukushima. Well, stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with some information about some victories in the info war as well as some continuing fights. Stay tuned. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back. 
Now, it's a sure sign that we're winning the information war when we start to see people like Rachel Maddow at MSNBC start to question the government's official story instead of just being a propaganda outlet for the government's official stories, instead of just repeating their press releases, she's actually looking at the behavior of the FBI. And this is a real change because we've seen her make all kinds of ridiculous accusations towards InfoWars, Alex Jones, anyone who questions the government's official story. But now she's taking a close look at, of all things, the Boston bombing. She says there's something wrong at the FBI, and she urges the release of the Boston bombing autopsy report. She also points out that Every FBI shooting since 1993, and that's about 150 of them, have been deemed to be justified by who? Oh, by the FBI. That's right. They're the ones who investigate themselves. Something fundamentally wrong with that. And she has a problem with the execution of Ibrahim Todeshev. You know, that's the guy that was picked up for questioning by the FBI. He told his friends, I'm worried that they're going to kill me. And then he, it turns out he was shot six times once in the back of the head. And yet, we don't know exactly what's happening. So she's asking questions about that. That's good that she's asking questions. Is this a case of them looking at their falling ratings and deciding that they no longer have any credibility any more than the military does? Remember the press release where the military said they, the public sees everything that we're doing as just mindless propaganda? People are starting to see that from the mainstream media. We just saw Piers Morgan and CNN, their ratings are falling through the tank. And Rachel Maddow and MSNBC are not far behind. Now, we've also seen some victories on the food front in the info war. Remember, we had Vana Hari, who is the food babe. She kicked off her petition to get shoe rubber, as we call it. It's a chemical called azodicarbonamide, if I pronounce that correctly. It's a shoe rubber chemical that was removed from Subway's bread after she started her petition here at InfoWars. It very quickly went viral. She had the greatest reaction that she's ever had from any petitions that she put out there. It was picked up. They pulled it out of their food. But now we learn that it's not just Subway. It's nearly 500 common foods that are putting that in there. They had an organization went through 80,000 common grocery foods, and they found it in nearly 500 items, things like White Castle frozen cheeseburgers, Pillsbury dinner rolls, nature's own whole grain bread. That sounds very healthy, and yet it's got rubber, the same chemical they used to make rubber mats. What they're doing is they're actually poisoning our food in order to make it pretty. You know, a lot of times you'll look at heritage foods, even the farmer that we spoke to earlier this week about his heritage pigs, maybe they don't look as nice as the clean-shaven pigs with no tails that the big agro creates, but... If you look at a heritage tomato, it may not look very good, but it tastes great. What they do, however, is they genetically modify or selectively breed these tomatoes to look good in the grocery store. And many times they don't have any taste. And many times they have something like Monsanto has done where they systemically put in a pesticide, genetically insert that into the pesticide. You can't even wash it off. It is put into the DNA of the food. That's what we have to worry about. And we have to ask why are they doing this? Just to make the food look good? Just to sell it? Just to make it look appetizing when it loses its taste, when it has great health consequences to us? And all the while, they're trying to shut down family farms, putting out new regulations from the FDA, talking about how they're going to shut down natural fertilizer on the farms and stop practices like having animals plow, which is something that's been going on for millennia. Now, we also see that Yahoo has now had their webcam images intercepted by Britain's version of the NSA, the GCHQ. I guess that's kind of a generally creepy headquarters. And they're acting kind of like a combination of the NSA and the TSA because although they've intercepted this from 1.8 million users in just one six-month period alone, a lot of this material has included a large quantity of sexually explicit images. So they've kind of combined both of the functions of two of our worst big brother agencies and here's one of their internal memos. They say, as a trade-off, we only collect an image every five minutes, but it would be helpful to incorporate selection and collect images at a much faster rate for all of our targets. We should see if this is feasible. That's right, they want to know everything about you. They, don't, they can't get enough pictures of the public. Looking at people's webcam images,